So welcome everybody to our November GSA Senate Assembly meeting. We're excited to have many uh, speakers today that are going to be talking from us all around campus. Um, so just to look over our agenda, we're first going to be hearing from Taylor about the professional development program from the graduate school. Then Nagla is going to give us an update on her end. We're going to hear from all three of the um, GSA committees that we have. So the Student Engagement Committee with Bradley, Finance Committee with Mac, the Programming Committee with me, and then we're going to introduce a couple of the university-wide committees. Um, this is something that I think, or we all think is very important um, since a lot of senators and just graduate students in general are unaware of how many graduate positions we have across campus. Um, so we'll be hearing from Kayla about the Sustainability Council, Nagla, who sits on the Faculty Senate, and then our two uh, SGA graduate senators, Merve and Tessie, before we adjourn. All right, so with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Taylor. Taylor, if you'd like to introduce yourself, and I will stop sharing so you can share your screen. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, so I am Taylor. I'm the PFL coordinator. I'm just gonna briefly kind of tell you guys about it. I don't wanna take too much of your time. I see that you guys have a lot to do, but um, I will share my screen. Um, let's see, can you all see that? Okay, awesome. Let me try this. Okay, so yeah, um, Preparing Future Leaders, that's the program or just PFL. Um, so really quickly, I'm gonna just go through kind of what it is. It was, or it is, a program created in partnership between UNCG and ANT. So I have a bunch of students from both schools in there and they can kind of cross over to complete this program as they find workshops or things. And it's for graduate students' personal or like professional development and their personal career preparation, depending on what they do. And some of our goals are to just kind of enhance the marketability of students, their career opportunities, their competitiveness. We want to support students in their learning and their teaching and research if those are things that they're interested in doing. We're seeking to kind of promote interdisciplinary opportunities. So nothing we're asking students to do is just solely within their field. We, they, they engage with the community and other departments and, and it's a very diverse Kind of program and we want to strengthen their understanding of job searching and their roles in the career that they're seeking. Um, it's only two semesters to complete. That's give or take. Students can complete it much faster than two semesters or a little bit longer if that best suits kind of their schedule. And it consists of two separate tracks catered and dependent on the student's career goals, which I will go over. One of our tracks is the preparing future faculty. And this is for students who are seeking an academic career as a faculty member. Some of these requirements center around professionalization workshops like teaching or leadership. They will get teaching practice. Um, they will fill out those teaching modules. They will learn research and assessment skills responsibly. They will develop job materials and teaching documents just to have on hand and they'll learn strategies for searching and landing an academic job. And um, this is only about nine objectives that we have laid out for students, so it's not too long. And something we do have students in, on this track do is um, work with a faculty member of their choice, just as a mentor, um, just to improve some things, to build this portfolio that we kind of have going for them, uh, just doing that together. Our second track is the Preparing Future Professionals. And this is for all the other students who are seeking jobs in business, industry, government, or nonprofit careers. This track definitely becomes a little more personalized just because our students in this track are, they have a bunch of different needs. They're all looking for a different kind of career. We have, I mean, at least 16 objectives that the students can choose from. They don't have to complete all of those. This track is more on a point system. So each of these objectives has a point value and they just need to total 10 points. And then they complete that track and really they can pick or choose. We want this program to be really autonomous. We want them to have a lot of flexibility in what they're doing. So, and students are more than welcome to bring other opportunities that aren't on the list to me if they think it best suits their needs. And I'm more than happy to listen to those. Oftentimes I tell them to go for it. Um, 
but yet some of the things include building leadership skills, um, shadowing or getting an internship with somebody who is in their career field that they're interested in, um, researching the kind of money and legalities in the desired field or starting a business. And we want them to kind of learn just strategies to search for and land a job. We know that's really hard, especially right now. So we think that's really important, but really this is a very flexible kind of autonomous thing for people. And the last thing that I have for you guys is just where and how to sign up if you're interested or any other student that you know could be interested. Um, I have this website right here. Honestly, if you just put this in your search bar, it'll take you right to this page. I just wanted to show you that this is what you should be looking for. Um, and if you scroll to the bottom, our enrollment form is right there. It's just a link or on the side is the forms tab that's also there. Um, this site is also full of a lot of really useful information. It has a lot more depth than what I'm giving you guys very briefly. And it, it kind of goes more in depth with both of our tracks. It answers a lot of questions that students may have right off the bat. Um, it'll have every form that you need. So yeah, once you fill out the enrollment form, they will contact me at this email, pfl at uncg.edu. Just to talk more about their plans, you know, um, what their career goals are, what track they're interested in pursuing. I might ask to set up a meeting on Zoom or over the phone or anything. Um, but my email is also always open just for students who have questions, if they need anything. I mean, I'm really happy to help. I love it. Um, I live on the email. So if they ever need anything or any of you need anything or if any of you need to email me to kind of um, remember all of this or have any other questions, feel free or I can send this presentation along. But yeah, that's what I have for you guys about PFL. If you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. Stop sharing so I can see what's going on. And she has it right there. That's perfect. Yeah, you had one question in the chat, but Dr. Bell had you back. So he answered that one for you. If anybody else has any other questions for Taylor, go ahead and just unmute yourself and ask, or you can use the chat. Yeah, definitely can't see all of you. <laughs> Yes, just a really quick question. So I was going through the website two days ago and I wanted to double check. So when, when we're done with the PFL, will it appear on our transcripts? Um, so to my understanding, first of all, um, I'm keeping track of everything that gets submitted to me from students. I have documentation of that. I have a folder for each student separately. I do know that I send that along to something I'm not going to lie, Dr. Bell likely knows the name of said person. I'm not quite sure yet, um, but I do, I am under the impression I send that along and they will then um, kind of approve that and then that'll go on your transcript. And Lauren, no, it doesn't cost anything to do this. You just enroll and get in touch with me and then we can go from there. All right, any other questions for Taylor? Well, thank you so much, Taylor. I really appreciate you coming to our meeting. I know we've been waiting to hear for a, hear you at a meeting for like two months now. So thank you so much for coming. I think that's a great resource we're not all aware of. Yeah, thanks for having me, really appreciate it. All right, next up is our own president, Nagla. Do you want to take over the floor? Thank you so much, Lexi. I think Karen and Travis made my day. You are both beautiful persons, and we are so thrilled having you in GSA. You are the real enrichment. The senators are the real enrichment in, in the Senate this year and every year. So as your e-board, we represent you with other senators campus-wide. So we do a lot of advocacy for you. We try to bring resources for you. So I want to touch um, upon just the most important things right now for us. So um, I, I, I want to brief you on what happened in the meeting yesterday in the faculty senate. 
uh, for us advocating and helping undergraduate students getting the academic relief policy, because we graduate students, we will have the academic relief policy. I will talk with you also about uh, our informal meetings, the space we created for you, and we waited for you to come see us and talk with us. Um, I, I, will, I will brief you on Come Talk with GSA the next meeting. It will be a wonderful meeting with our Dean of Graduate School. Um, I, will, I will brief you, and this I know this is hard for me to share that we, there will be increase in the fees. It is not much, but it is really needed, and I will explain why this increase in the fees um, was proposed by Dr. Kathy Aikens, the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Student affairs in, on campus, they, they respect graduate students so much, they want to know how to celebrate us, so we need your ideas. Um, I will also ask you about what are your plans over the break? Bradley, Travis, Kristen, Dr. Bugs, and Lexi, what will you do over the break? Just trying to, to, to know how you will be and try to support you whenever you need us. I, I will remind you by the end of, of, of my words that please reach out to me. I love to, I'm an extrovert. Everybody knows that about me, Crystal. I'm an extrovert and Arabic person. Crystal knows she is Lebanese. She knows what I'm talking about. So uh, I love to hear from you, Senator. So please, this is my email. So send me your concerns, send me your questions, your ideas, talk to me. I love talking to you. So Alexi, I, I, I will stop sharing because I need to see their faces. And I, I, will, I will be very fast to, to use the time that you gave me. So yesterday there was a faculty senate meeting. Me and the wonderful Alex are your representative. We are non-voting members on the, on the faculty senate. Yesterday I advocated for amendment to the academic relief policy for the undergraduate students. Dr. Bugs was there, Dr. Bell was there. I think my whole idea, guys, that we as SGA, we need to work with the student government organization to support them, to learn from them. And this is why Lexi, we invited Austin Moore, the president of SGA, to come today. I hope he is okay. He is not there on the call, but we believe that all students during the pandemic should come together, should cooperate, should support each other. And yesterday in that meeting, I advocated for, for giving the academic relief policy to undergraduate students. I hope Dr. Bucks that I did a good job yesterday. I tried to tell all the faculty how hard this time is for all of us. Please help us with this policy as much as you could. So the good news I have for you, on November 19 at 4.30, we are inviting Dean Kelly Bird, the Dean of the Graduate School, to be our speaker for Come Talk with GSA. She will be listening to us. She will be listening to your question, providing resources, and mostly support. She is a wonderful support for us graduate students. So please use this time with her to bring your feelings, to bring your questions, and to bring any concerns you have. I, I, I am sorry to say that the tuition and fees committee um, had, um, I don't know what they call it, Dr. Bud's a suggestion or a, um, a policy or, uh, or a, uh, an increase in the fees. What do they call it in the policy language? A recommendation to increase. A, re yeah. a recommendation to increase the tuition fees. Uh, to be a total of $62 and it will come into effect academic year fall 2021. The rationale behind that, we don't want anybody to increase fees for us students, but the rationale for that, that the money will go to the counseling center. There is a huge need for counseling services during the pandemic. And this is why Dr. Aikens advocated for please increase the, the fees and the money will go to higher staff, to provide more services to students. So we know it's hard increasing the fees, but I think it will benefit us all. And I think Bradley, you are an advocate for the counseling center. It is a, such a wonderful resource that sometimes we need to pay for and support. Um, Dr. Casey Aikens, she is the vice president, vice chancellor for student affairs. She's asking you, how can 
she celebrate every graduate student. In the chat, put ideas. Tell me how you want the student affairs to showcase graduate students. Any ideas you put in the chat, I will take it back to her. You can say, do uh, grab grab like what we do, Lexi. Uh, do a competition for us. Whatever ideas you bring, I will take it to her. So please use the chat. I, I will take all your ideas with me. Uh, I think Dr. Bell um, raised a very important point, and he is always thinking of you as, as an advisor and as, I think, a professor and as a father, too. And the same for Dr. Bags. He said, Nagla, we have to check on our students during the break. Will they be OK? So Mac, what are you doing during the break? Are you going home? Are you going to see the family or staying here? And if you stay here, what do you need? Do you need any kind of support? This may be the second thing I wish that you add ideas in the chat about what you need during the break. And if you want support, what kind of support you expect from GSA. Uh, I, I told you all how much we appreciate you, how much we love you. Please send me emails about, about your success stories, your beautiful selves and any concern you have for us. I wish you a wonderful rest of a wonderful meeting with Lexi Hoopman. The floor is yours, Keith. Thank you, Nagla. And yes, to follow up, Nagla did an amazing job in the Faculty Senate yesterday. So her saying, I hope I did okay. She did an amazing job as she always does. So thank you, Nagla, for standing up for all students at UNCG. We need somebody like you to advocate for us. Lexi, before you go on, can can you yield in case there are questions for Nagla? She gave a lot of information. Of course. Anybody have any questions for Nagla? You can go ahead and just unmute yourself and talk to her. Yes, talk to me. I love to, I love to hear the beautiful voices. I love voices. Shazma, come on. People, people, you have to talk and tell me. Hey, Nagla. Hey, Shazma, it's so good seeing you. Tell me. Tell good me to something. see you as well. I'm just thinking what to say. I'm still thinking. That fee part was a little, you know, ouch. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but it's needed, you know, Shazma, I go to the, the, to the support group that is uh, delivered by the counseling center. I benefit a lot from the support group and I wish they had many, but they don't have enough staff. Mm -hmm. And I really see that we need mental health support in this difficult time. So it is ouch, but we 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 have we got to it. we apologize. We apologize. I understand. But please, if you remember anything that you want to share, email me. Email me. Of course, of course, Nagla. Of course. My greetings to your kids. Thank you. <laughs> Nagla, I know that you asked what we might need over break. Um, but one thing that at least myself as a new senator was wondering if we could do is maybe host a virtual event or something like a trivia night so that the senators can get to know each other a little bit better while we're all in a more relaxed state and not so busy throughout the semester. Just because I feel like I'm a little bit lost still. There's so many people and I'd love to meet everyone and get to chat with everyone. But Abby, a great idea. You can lead us in this idea. I, will, I am in. I am in, Abby. I love the idea. I love it. Let's us communicate on when and let's let's do it. I am also in my own home. I want to escape from my kids. So I can join you, definitely. Yeah, I just wanted to tag in and agree with Abby that I think that idea would be awesome. And Abby, I can, if you end up kind of working on this idea, I'd be glad to help you with it too. Ah, oh, yes. Thank you so much, Gabe. Please, please, please. We, and we are here for you. We can provide resources. Dr. Bax sometimes give us prizes. You never know. She's always giving a lot of good things to us. So we are in. I will communicate with you to, to coordinate this. This is beautiful. Thank you. Um, I had a quick question, Nagla. When you asked about uh, relief for over the break, what do we have in place currently for our international students with families and children over here who can't actually work during the break? Um, I, I need to see who's talking. I need the name. Send me the name, please. I, my apology. Hi. Yeah, hi, Helen. Hi. So this is such a, a, an important question, and I, I, I will ask Dr. Bill and Dr. Bucks to 
to please help me in bringing all the resources that we are aware of. So your question is about uh, international students mm -hmm. not having, I assume, like uh, a, the G, but the GA, we are still paid during the break. And correct me, Dr. Bill, if I am wrong. As, are you a GA, for example, or? So it's not, it's not for me. Um, the majority of my program is actually international individuals and a couple of them have just recently come over with their families and they're finding that the pay that they were receiving the first year is not the same as their second year. And so they don't have, like their income is stretched really thin right now, especially with this pandemic and they're not allowed to work outside of the university. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're kind of struggling with, with that financially. And I just didn't know what we had in place for those individuals. I need help. I need help, Dr. Bugs and Dr. Bell, in answering the question to, to the best of our knowledge. As usual, I'm going to tag to Dr. Bell. What I will say is what Haley already knows is that graduate assistant contracts end on, depending on your department, either the December 4th or 5th or mm -hmm. maybe 12th or 13th. And so Haley is right because we don't come back until January 19th. That's a six week span that those students would not get paid per contract. And as she's also noted, because they're international students, they cannot work outside of the university. But I will tag team Dr. Bell on that. I just wanted to affirm, Haley, that all your information was in fact correct. So, um, but I, let's, let's hear the Associate Dean's um, position on it. Well, um, I, I, don't, I don't have, I, I, I just don't know. I simply don't know. Haley, it's a good question. I know that people have been thinking about it. Um, but you know, it's it's more of an issue this semester, this year than it's ever been before, um, and so I'm I'll I'll reach out to IPC um, and I will reach out to um, Dean Burke and see what I can find out. Um, we can also talk to Dr. Akins and see um, what Student Affairs has. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have a good answer for you, but it's a, it's a wonderful question, and um, that's sort of the purpose of of these meetings is to um, to have these discussions so that we can we can uh, get some answers. So okay. thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bell, I have a question for you. Not a question, but uh, just a comment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, myself, I'm a, from inter, I'm an international student and there are a couple of uh, friends uh, who are international students who are having a hard time uh, that they cannot, their parents cannot fund them uh, for the study because the, they lost their job uh, back in their home country. So any support would really help them as well. Okay, okay. I will, I will follow up with this group. Um, I'll find some answers out and see what we can do. Thank you so much. It's yep. on my list as well. So we will get back to you quickly as possible. Thank you, Haley, so much for the advocacy. Appreciate it. Yeah, those are all great points and great ideas. I just wanna throw it in there too. We have our Come Talk with GSA with Dean Burke next week. Um, so those would be great ideas to bring to that meeting. Please, everybody come. We want to see your beautiful faces then too. Um, and like you're talking about, we want to get to know senators better. We want to get to know all of you better. And that's what that event is for. So that's next week, Thursday. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but we're going to have to move on here for time's sake. So the next person up, Student Engagement Committee, is Bradley. Go ahead and take over. Fantastic. Um, so really all I want to talk about tonight, we've met one time so far, uh, just kind of our introductory getting up to speed on what we're going to be dealing with this academic year uh, with COVID going on and, you know, things are, are starting to kind of escalate again. What we end up working on might be a little bit different, but here's what our constitution says that we're, uh, our kind of core themes are, you know, issues that are going to affect all graduate students, health insurance, doctor. Uh, health insurance, Dr. Bug has just talked about compensation for GAs and TAs, parking, um, you know, service parking, parking decks, transportation, you know, the, the Spartan chariots and things like that, housing, and really anything that falls under this, what I consider a very broad umbrella of student engagement. If it's involved in how we as graduate students are going to interact with the university, I've, you know, and kind of what I, you know, when I come across anything that the rest of the eboard comes across, if there's an issue that you come across, uh, shoot me an email. My email's here on the screen. 
Uh, the big one that we've come across this year is I've had several online students reach out and talk about how they don't feel included in a lot of the things that go on compared to face to face students. And these are all things that we want to be able to work with and we want to make sure that they're included, um, especially since a lot of people are online this semester, a lot more people are getting that experience and seeing a lot more of how online students feel all the time. Um, so we're going to be meeting again very soon. And if you ever have any questions, if you ever want to pop in for a meeting and just kind of talk to us about an issue, just shoot me an email and we'll figure something out. And that's it. Any questions for Bradley? We have a couple minutes left. If anybody does, you can just unmute yourself or you can use the chat. I have to say, I agree with what Bradley said. Um, I have been an online student this whole time with UNCG because I can't afford to live in Greensboro and driving an hour. Well, driving from where I live can be a bit of a challenge. So I do the online thing. I love it. I really do. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to it. You know, I can take my classes from home and, um, and just hang out at home when I'm done. I don't have to worry about traffic or any of that stuff. Um, but I do oftentimes feel like I'm not included in as much in school as I, as I would like to be. Um, it just feels really hard to, to um, feel included with stuff. And the computer stuff can be a little challenging for me to begin with because when I was an undergrad, we didn't use computer stuff like we do online as much. All this stuff either didn't exist or we just didn't do the computer because we went to class face to face so i'm really trying to learn the computer learn all of this stuff and try to find a way to feel included in the school and so i think that if people can find ways to make us more included i would really appreciate it i know that i would also love to be able to meet come up to campus and meet everybody and get to know everybody in person and if i have opportunity i would like to do that but i just really sometimes feel like I'm not included. So I agree with what Bradley said. So if there's any way that you can make us feel included, I would appreciate it. Lauren, I'll actually send you an email. Um, and that way, if you want to hop on our Zoom call for our next student engagement committee meeting, uh, that way we can talk about this and, and we can get some more ideas rolling because we definitely want to get some more stuff rolling for the spring to, to figure out what we can do. That would be great. I, I really would like to do that. So, also, yeah. I know it's any, if anybody is interested in any of the committees that we're gonna be talking about today, please just email the person responsible. And it's not like a closed committee. It can be open to whoever wants to come. Uh, same for the programming committee. So please just email us and let us know if you're interested in any of those. Bradley, are you good? Any closing remarks on your side? Um, I just I addressed it in chat as well, but if there's anyone that doesn't have the Slack link already, I'll be putting it in chat in just a second. Um, and so anyone that isn't already there that wants to be, if you've never used Slack and you want to use us to figure out how to do it, I'll have that in there. And same thing, I want to get that a, a, a little bit easier of a way for us to communicate without sending 10,000 emails when we're each already receiving 10,000 emails. So anything I can do to lighten that email load for anybody, I'm, I'm definitely happy to. happy to. Yeah, can I ask just a quick question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for, I guess it ain't to you, Bradley or Lauren, um, the, is there a way to like send out emails like to only like online students if we wanted to do like a survey or something to see like what they, they would like or something? I don't know if there's a way to like parse them out instead of just like a campus wide. Um, though I said, that might end up being a question more for Dr. Bugs or Dr. Bell that might be more familiar with like the system of how we collect information. Mm -hmm. As far as how I can access everybody through Spartan Connect, it's just all graduate students or, or none. So, um, but yeah, I would love a way to be able to, to get direct feedback from online students. You could put up a survey and, a and ask for email addresses yeah. to the online students and just say, if you're an online student and you want to get emails, That's you could do true. that. Yeah, you, say, could, you could ask just put it out there that way the students know you're contacting them i know if i know i could give you my email address if you 
wanted it, I'd be happy to be involved in it because like I said, I live an hour from campus. So I just feel so isolated from everything. And I would really like to, and I have to say, I have to one more thing I want to say, if you guys are up near Greensboro, get out and enjoy those fall leaves because they are gorgeous. I got to go up there the other day and I just love the colors. Just get out and take a walk and enjoy the fall leaves because it is so beautiful. And that's socially distancing too. I'm with you, Lauren. Fall in North Carolina is the most Mm -hmm. beautiful season. That is great. So up next, if anybody has any other comments for Bradley, please just utilize the chat or you can email him or use the Slack. Once he gets that post in there, go ahead and add that onto your phone. Uh, Next up is Mac talking about her finance committee. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. All right. So um, I feel like I'm everyone's either favorite person right now or least favorite person, (laughs) depending on if I've pushed your RCF through um, and PDF through or not. Um, I first want to shout out to the finance committee for working so hard. Um, We just have a little bit of work left to do. Um, And so if you have not been contacted yet for either your RCF um, or that you've noticed our PDFs haven't gone quite through yet, um, we're hoping to tie this up by the end of the week. We want to get those um, checks back to you guys um, or your items ordered. Um, Overall, I thought, as you can see, we had 34 successful applications for the RCF, which I thought was amazing, Um, kind of bringing it back to life. uh, The things that you guys are asking for, um, we're just blown away by the partially the simplicity of it. And so we're so happy to be able to help you guys um, get those items you really need. And so I just, I'm so excited about the RCF. The application process, I think, was pretty smooth. Um, we extended the deadlines to try to meet some of those require or demands that is on you guys, um, giving you guys more time to apply, which I think helped. We had a lot, quite a few more submissions right at the last minute. Um, the only thing is that for the RCF, it's a little more work on the finance committee and my end. So we appreciate your patience in letting us work with your budget manager, budget manager um, to get you those items. The PDF, same thing. Obviously, we had very few submissions. Typically, we have around 100 uh, PDF submissions, but with COVID and a lot of things going virtual, we only had 14 successful submissions. Um, and then you can see those money dividends there. They're actually right now, they're, we don't know the exact number just because we haven't pushed it through our own budget manager yet. Um, and as you know, for the, especially for the RCF, some of those items change prices. And so to give you an exact number is kind of impossible at this moment. Um, but these are about ballpark figures about what we can give back to students. And I think it's really important to be as transparent as possible with you guys to know that your student fee money is coming back to you. And I think overall, it was a really good funding period. And we're very excited to open up the funding window again in the spring um, to meet those both RCF and PDF demands. So if you guys have any questions, you can obviously email me with individual questions, um, or if you have large group questions, I would love to hear them or just feedback in general. Or everything's great, it's fine too. <laughs> Hi, uh, hello, Meg. I just want to ask um, if, if, you got, if you're gonna again post the um, fund recipients on the Spartan Connect. Um, so- that would be a question for Dr. We can post the fund recipients. Um, yeah, we, I, we can do that. Yeah. I think last year, I guess last year, yeah, they were posting um, an Excel sheet showing how many people applied and then how many got, uh, how many of them got funds and something. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely do that again. I think it's important to recognize those that applied and got funding, especially for departments um, to see that there's a large student need um, that needs funds for both the RCF and PDF. And I think it tells our university and people higher up that we need to continue to fund these kind of things. So that's a great, great point, Murph. I think it's also important because probably you are gonna get a bunch of questions if my application approved or not, such as for me, I, I applied, but I didn't get a response yet. I was just so curious, but I didn't want to send you a bunch of <laughs> emails. So I, mm-hmm. I think like everybody can see if they got funded. And then, so it's just 
can remove a lot of email work from you. Yeah, that's a great idea. And the way that the um, finance committee and myself work through those applications is a uh, on a time base. So first come, you submitted first, then you get processed first in essence. Um, so we're just working through. So if you um, submitted later in the funding window, um, then just be patient. We're working <laughs> to get you your funds. Okay. Uh, Mac, it was done in the past, as Merv already noted too, for transparency, just so everybody in the group could know what the status of the applications were. So yes, Merv, gotcha. you're absolutely right. It was done on Spartan Connect, so it couldn't be open to the public but it was open to engineers if you wanted to see. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I guess, um, hi, Alex. Uh, uh, are we left over with a lot of funds at the end of the two cycles? Because there's only two periods to apply, correct? Correct, yep. So there so are- Realistically, um, we may run into the situation that we ran into last spring, where we had a large amount of money set aside for those PDFs or travel. And now that travel is uh, not prohibited or it's prohibited by the university, um, the RCF is a great way to utilize the funds that we have set aside for PDF and RCF. PDF, remember, supports the online registration only. There's no travel. Um, mm -hmm. I highly encourage, we could fund realistically almost three times that amount of students for the RCF. Um, remember that you get a maximum of $300. Um, I think that after this semester, people could see how easy it is to apply um, and that hopefully we get a lot more submissions. Because uh, again, we could probably fund uh, without knowing exact numbers, roughly three times that amount that applied this round. Okay. Otherwise, guess, we are left over with I some money. Curious if, like, would you ever do more than just two like application periods to like maybe increase that frequency? Because like I know I felt like I was pressed to come up with anything, so I didn't. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know if like having like two more dates or so throughout the year, like spread out, mm -hmm. would maybe help people. Like, okay, maybe not this one, but I'll do the next rolling application date. I don't know if that's ever been considered. Yeah, I haven't um, thought about that. Uh, it is rather labor intensive um, on the imagine. finance committee and my end um, mm -hmm. to do that. And also our GSA budget manager, uh, Corey Potts, who's absolutely amazing. Um, so I'm not sure we'd have to figure out those dates because I know they're also funding windows we are meeting, mm -hmm. um, but that's a great, great item to bring up. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mac. If anybody else has any other questions, please utilize the chat or you can email Mac. Okay, so next up, um, just a couple programming updates. So first of all, shout out to my awesome programming committee. You all are wonderful. I have loved getting to know you the last couple of months. Um, and they've been a big help in planning these things that are on this slide. So first of all, we if you missed it, we did a Halloween slash Day of the Dead contest. So we did a costume contest and a pumpkin carving contest. Uh, there was six different winners for that, so three in each. Um, they all loved their AirPods or Keurig or GSA swag bag that they got. So I'm um, really looking forward to our next competition, which is going to be in December. So we're going to do two again, December decorations. So that could be your house, your tree, any other type of holiday decor that you have. Um, and then a cookie decorating contest as well. So there'll again be prizes announced for that. And that will be actually before Christmas. So it's not, we're not gonna be running any social media ads on Christmas, um, but we'll do this probably about the week before Christmas. So look forward to that and get your decorations and your cookies ready. The next thing we have already kind of uh, mentioned is the Come Talk with GSA event, which is going to be next week. That is going to be with Dean Burke and um, somebody please post the link in there again, but you'll get the link when we send out the agenda and you'll see it on social media. So just look for those things, but that will be on Thursday from 4.30 to 5.30. Uh, 10 lucky attendees are going to win a mental health resource. This is going to be the um, kind of a steady thing for all Come Talk with GSA events in the future. So this month, we actually asked our last month's expert to give us some ideas. And she sent us a list of 10 books that are recommended for graduate students that are known as like a mental health resource. So what we are going to do is take our attendees, 
do a random raffle and choose 10 of the names. And then those 10 um, lucky people are going to be able to choose which book they want off of that list. So please come next week if you're able, hopefully you would win a book, but either way you'll be leaving with very valuable information. And Dean Burke will be with us from 4.30 to five. And then from five to five, uh, 30, it will just be us hanging out. So this is the casual event you were all talking about. Come hang out with us, come get to know us. We wanna get to know you. And then we are looking forward to doing a Thanksgiving giveaway with Spartan Open Pantry. Um, so this is not finalized yet. I just wanted to let you know we are looking forward to that. So hopefully over Thanksgiving, Spartan Open, Spartan Open Pantry is going to have more um, gift cards to Best Way Grocery. If you remember, we kind of did the food initiative during the summer for graduate students. This is going to be a little bit of an extension to that. So we'll have $25 gift cards um, and you can go to Spartan Open Pantry and pick those up over Thanksgiving, just a, a way to make sure people have food on their table over Thanksgiving if um, they're struggling in any way. So our next event that we're really looking forward to is Grab Grub with GSA. We sent out a survey to all of you and graduate students a couple weeks ago asking for which restaurants they would like to support. So these are all either black owned or person of color owned restaurants in Greensboro supporting the local restaurants. And this is the list that you can see. Dames, not a big surprise here, was voted in as number one of the restaurants we wanted to visit. Um, so we are hopefully going to have the event at Dames at the end of November here before everybody leaves. Um, and if not, uh, we will move on and try to get Taste of Ethiopia in. So just look forward to those emails. Uh, we'll be sending out a sign up for that. So 50 people will be able to come and get a free meal at one of these restaurants um, during a specific window of time on a date. Um, so just look forward to those. And we are really looking forward to eating at these restaurants. And then the last thing I was going to mention, um, running out of time here, is we're going to be planning two professional development events next semester. One will be in February and one will be in April. The programming committee has been compiling ideas for professional development and most likely what is going to happen is those will be put into a survey and we're gonna send out the survey so we can all rank what we would prefer the professional development to be. And professional headshots, by the way, is one of those options. I heard somebody mention that earlier. Um, so if that's something you are all looking forward to, uh, please vote once we send out that survey. Yes, um, Dr. Bugs put a good comment in the chat. These, the Grab Grab with GSA is to go meal. So how it would work is you're gonna sign up beforehand. Um, there'll be 50 meals bought at least for our first round. If you sign up, um, you come during that time that you've signed up for, and then you would get to walk out with that meal for free. So GSA would be purchasing um, those meals that you could come pick up. All right, so I, we don't have a lot of time, but is there any question for me? Lexi, for the Grab Grub, will there be more instructions on how to do that later? Oh, yes. There will be a whole email that goes out with the survey. And yes, <laughs> sorry, I had to brief overview it here. We don't have a lot of time. But yeah, so just look forward to that. And we'll be um, advertising that on social media and stuff, too. So as long as you're following us on Spartan Connect, you will get the information. So make sure you're following us there. Good question, Abby. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we are going to jump into Kayla's presentation. She, she is with the Sustainability Council. So that is one of the um, university-wide committees that a graduate student can sit on. And she's been on that council for a couple of years now. So Kayla, I'm gonna go ahead and let you take over. Okay, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to come talk to you guys today. Um, I, we're doing a lot of different things in the Sustainability Council and there's a lot of um, links and stuff that I want to share. So I've sent Lexi like a list of links that I'm hoping we can share out, but I just wanted to kind of uh, give an overview of what we're doing and then, um, yeah, see if you guys have any questions. Let me share my screen. Oops. Sorry if you can hear my dog too. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so just a little bit of an update. Um, I guess I can make this bigger. Um, so the Sustainability Council, if you're not aware of what it is, it is a chancellor um, reporting council. And basically we um, discuss sustainability on campus and we are trying to support all the sustainability efforts on campus. Um, so thinking about sustainability as not just like recycling and um, things that we might associate kind of 
automatically with like environmental justice, but also um, social justice, aesthetics, um, trying to see sustainability as something that supports our um, ourselves as humans, but also our environment and the world that we live in. So seeing sustainability um, holistically. Um, so there's a diverse body that is part of the council. Um, and uh, we also have a GSA rep. So I'm the GSA rep for the council. Um, I actually have been with the council for a number of years now. So I'm also the secretary. Oh, sorry, <laughs> she's very unhappy. The <laughs> bagel, hold on. Um, okay, sorry guys. Um, so for our current projects, I just wanted to kind of go over some of the things that we're doing. So we are revising our bylaws currently to focus on supporting the climate action plan that we have. So this is something that was developed a few years back and the goal is to get a UNCG carbon neutral by 2050. So it's a very large goal, um, but we're trying to focus on ways to reorganize um, the council and also support the sustainability matrix that we have that outlines how we implement um, and manage sustainability across the the university. So we're doing a little bit of reorganization with our bylaws to try and make sure that we're um, accomplishing those goals that we've set out to um, accomplish. We're also preparing to resubmit. Um, this is a, a certification. So ACHE is the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. We currently are at a silver rating, which is good, but we want to be at gold. And this is just a, a sort of certification of sustainability efforts on campus. It's a national certification. Um, you can go and look at different schools and so forth, but um, we want to work towards improving our score. So that's something that we're also focusing on as well. Um, and then we're also working on pursuing transparency and advocating for sustainable, responsible and impact investing, which is known as SRI. Um, so basically what that is, is um, the sort of investment um, that is uh, focusing on environmental, social and corporate governance. Um, we produced uh, incorporation with a lot of different bodies, the Faculty Senate, Student Senate, um, GSA did one as well. Um, we, uh, we produced a uh, basically a call for the invest UNC invest UNCG Investment Fund to consider sustainable investment as part of their um, investment practices and to report to us about that, um, to have a little bit more transparency about how we're investing our money. Um, so that's something that we're pursuing as well to try and um, hopefully make strides with that as well. So then a lot of different ways to participate. Uh, so like I said, this is kind of a large list, but I do have links for all of these things. Um, so you can pursue those and browse through them when you get a chance. There's a commuter survey that we have right now that's trying to help with our efforts um, with the climate action plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so this just helps us to get data about where students are coming from, how they're getting to campus. You know, are you biking? Are you driving? Are you using um, the transportation that we have? So it just helps us with that um, and setting those goals. We also have a sustainability literacy test. This is part of our STARS rating that I just talked about. So one of the ways that we can up our points and get a gold rating is by having a literacy test that goes out across the student body. Um, so it's 15 minutes. I've done it. It's not, it doesn't take a whole lot of time and it, you actually learn a lot about sustainability as well. Um, so the deadline for that is December 4th and we'd encourage everyone to take it. If you are teaching classes, we'd also encourage you to you know, ask your students to take it as well. It is for all students, grad students, undergrad students. We want everybody to take it. Um, we have the green room and office program. So this is just a, a checklist you can use to you know, green your space, whether it's your office space or your you know, room. Um, so I'd encourage you to check that out as well. We also have uh, the Green Fund, which I believe that uh, Will Queen has talked about the Green Fund before, but just to reiterate, because it is a great opportunity. Um, if you are doing research that has some sort of connection to sustainability, you can apply for funding from the Green Fund. It's also a place where we can see projects that we want to implement on campus. Um, so for instance, we had a cistern that was part of this um, Green Fund project. We got a, a sister cistern, that's what we call it, since we, have, we had one before, now we have two. Um, so these are, are opportunities, the Green Fund has opportunities for folks to see if there's a project that you have related to sustainability and get funding for that, um, or your own research or something that you're in, interested in doing as well. Um, we also have the sustainability film series. So the next one is actually uh, just a little bit later tonight at 6.30. Um, so there'll be a, a brief discussion after that. Usually they're about an hour or so, but they're really interesting presentations. 
Um, we have the sustainability lecture series, um, and that's something that we just finished our last one, but we'll be doing that again in the spring, so you can look out for um, more events in that nature. Um, the sustainability listserv is a good place if you're interested in sustainability events. This is basically a, a, a place where you can actually, you know, get on the listserv and then get notices about all of these things like the film series, like the lecture series. So if you're interested in any of this at all, I would encourage you to get on the listserv because um, that's a good way to just get more information. Um, we'd also encourage you to do the, oops, to do the, go to the website to see more about what we're doing with sustainability on campus. There's also a link on the website for student groups if you'd like to get more involved. Um, and the UNCG mobile app also has a little uh, link with sustainability as well. So if you have that app, I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, the app is just kind of cool in general, but we do have a little sustainability part. So we wanted to, to plug that as well. So I know that's a lot of information. I know we don't have a lot of time, but um, maybe I can exit out and see if there are any questions. Thank you, Kayla. It's so great to hear from you. And thank you so much from all of us for uh, showing our, sorry, supporting the graduate students through that committee. That's awesome. It's my pleasure. Um, so sorry yeah, for my. You, I'll have you just utilize the chat to answer any questions if anybody has it. And if you want to post your email and then all of those links that she was just showing, we will send that to everybody after the meeting. So just thanks. And sorry about my dog as well. <laughs> we have dogs too. <laughs> Okay, next is Faculty Senate. Nagla is going to talk about it. Yes, and my kids will jump into the, the meeting. So Kayla, you're okay. This is the reality we live in. It is okay. Um, so uh, I, I, I will also ask Dr. Bugs and Dr. Bell to jump in and help me with proper definition of the Faculty Senate. Um, I, I see the Faculty Senate is very close to the GSA Senate. So if you senators represent graduate students, so the faculty senate represents the faculty. So Dr. Bill, do you agree with this definition or should I add something more complicated and more specific? Oh, I, I think that's correct. I, yeah, I agree. You are My correct. apology, I tend to take something very simple. Um, I, I have the pleasure to, um, to have Alex Green stuff. I hope that I am pronouncing your last name correctly. You have to forgive me, Alex. So me and Alex, we are non-voting members on the Faculty Senate. Um, we are non-voting, but the, I think this is a powerful place where the faculty, you know, discuss issues related to us as students from an academic perspective, or I think will being as well, in addition to other things that are related to faculty that I'm not uh, aware of. But as non-voting members, me and Alex are, are there to be your voices, to advocate for you and for your needs. And we are always, um, our plan is to follow the discussions closely to see anything related to us and to have our feedback brought to the table and for our voices to be heard. I think Dr. Bill and Dr. Box that till now we are, we are doing um, a good representation of graduate students. I always bring to the, to the faculty senate how the pandemic is affecting us all academically, but emotionally and socially and psychologically. So um, we are doing our best to advocate for you. And whenever you have any ideas that you heard that is related to faculty and you want me and Alex to advocate for, please send it to us and we will put it on the table. Um, Lexi, I know we are running out of time, but I wish to give Alex one minute because he is representing the graduate students in the, in the faculty senate to tell us how you feel, Alex, about the importance of us being in this space in the Faculty Senate. Thank you. Yeah, um, the Faculty Senate, um, you know, as it said, is you know, made up of, I forget how many faculty members, several dozen. Um, so it can be an intimidating space to advocate for students. Um, but I sat in on one of the meetings a few weeks ago and they were talking about rule changes to Title IX and how they advocate for um, like a bullying policy within faculty. And I was like, well, you know, does this relate to students in any way? And they were like, that's a great question, but it wasn't, they weren't thinking about it 
um, bullying between students and faculty it was more between faculty tenured or not and how they treat each other. But just me posing that question kind of brought up some discussion about, oh yes, this doesn't include students in their definition. Um, but I think if it was helpful just to kind of bring a student perspective, especially a graduate student perspective, because we are employees, um, but just thought of as differently. So it was good to kind of have that input and um, their meetings can get kind of complex. So if you ever check out their agendas or meet minutes and you think of something that you would want to bring up, um, let's say fee increases and rationale and like, you know, um, what about the support we're gonna get over breaks, the pandemic, et cetera, anything related to your master's or PhD tenure here at UNCG, um, how can we represent you? So just even if it's something, you know, a question we could pose or a report we could submit to them, I think it sends um, a stronger statement if it comes from us, just because of the students we represent. Thank you. Thank you, Lexi. Back to you. Thank you, Nagla and Alex. Um, so I just wanted to quick say we have two more speakers that we're going to talk to, talk to today, but it is 528. So any of you that have to leave at 530, please, you are welcome um, to leave at 530. But if you're able to stay on for a couple more minutes, um, we could hear from our GSA, um, or sorry, our graduate SGA senators um, that have just started this year. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Merve and Tessie. Hello, everyone. I just want to share my screen if it's okay. Please so, do. We are not going to take that much time. So um, we want to, I want to introduce myself, but okay. So um, me and Tessie, we are in the Student Government Association 98 Senator this year. So, and then as graduate student senators. So, Tessie, are you here? Yeah. You want to start? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Trace, though. I think this is the first time kind of like meeting everyone. Um, we are graduate senators at the SGA, and it's just me and Mervy. And um, it's been nice being part of SGA and advocating for students. I'm part of the diversity inclusion committee and basically what uh, we talk about is how UNCG is diverse, like everyone is together, white, black, international students, and it's one big community, but it's more of like, how can everyone come together and feel like we are actually home? You don't feel like school is boring or um, I don't want to be here. So in SGA, everyone comes together to think of what will make undergraduate studies better, what will make graduate school better. And it has really been a good experience. And thanks to Nagla and Lexi, they've really, really been great. And it's been nice really working with them. I know so many people don't know about the Student Government Association, but basically what they do is they interact with faculty and everyone at the higher level of the university and try to make sure that every student is fine. And I understand that the pandemic has been very hard, at least for me, school has been stressful. So I understand that. And as graduate students, there are a lot of things to do. Uh, I'm, in, I'm a master's student in informatics and analytics, by the way, and it has been a lot of work. And I just want everyone to know that the Student Government Association is there for everybody. If you think there is something going on and you want us to know about, you can always email me or email Lexi. Oh, I will or, take a brief introduction. What we do, yeah. <laughs> or in the Mevi, and um, we'll pass along whatever it is to this to the government association. Thank you, everyone. Maybe over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. So, this is Marve. I'm a second year PhD student in special education department. So, and this year I got a chance to join the uh, student government association. That's my first time. So, and 
What I do is normally, um, since I'm really interested in special education, I'm in this spectrum at UNCG student organization. So I support my um, college students with autism. So, and then I'm in the self design studio under the School of Education. We support every student if they have a design and then if they want to design any materials during, during their teaching, even in college or in their schools. And then also during the um, during this year, 2020, I served as I ambassador. So originally I'm from Turkey. So I was an ambassador to represent my country. We were just kind of helping incoming international graduate students to um, get used to UNCG and then get to know more about the opportunities and events going on around the campus. So. Well, my purpose was joining the committee, actually like creating more accessible and inclusive community for every student. So keeping in my mind that we have college students with disabilities, I guess doesn't matter you have a disability or not. So every student needs support to being included. And then, so, and then every student needs, um, needs to feel belong to the NCG community. And then, um, just want to make sure that um, so graduate student voice counted in the Senate because we are only two, there are only two graduate student senators in the um, Student Government Association. So it's it has been a little bit hard for us since it's just two of us, but just uh, we are trying to do our best. I just want to give you a brief information what we do. So first of all, we attend the meetings in every, every Tuesday. So that's, um, we have to. And then um, we listen to student concerns if there is any. So these concerns generally, generally first come to um, GSA and then we read them. If it's approved, it goes to student affairs. So just keep in your mind, it's just does not directly go to student affairs. So, and then um, what we do generally in the meetings, we wait for legislative of, uh, um, offerings. So um, such as this Tuesday, uh, this week Tuesday, we will uh, be wait for chancellor candidates and selection. Every, doesn't matter your position, every GSA senator can uh, offer a legislative. So we read them two times in different meetings and then open to the voting. So such as um, since we are under the UN um, North Carolina higher education institutions. So uh, this time senators bring that half chancellor selection made and then candidates offered so to be um, more fair. So just they bring it to the Senate and then we vote for it. That's just one of the topics, but it can be anything. So um, just as an example, so I'm in the finance committee. So we have uh, different committees under the SGA. So under the finance committee, what I do is um, generally um, the budget distributed to the student organizations at the beginning of academic year. So it's, let's say if you have $50,000, so it depends on the budget requests, uh, we just get um, distribute them at the beginning of academic year. And then as a student organization, if you're requesting such as $1,000, you can get the get 75% of this up to 75% of this uh, budget request. So, but of course, that's not an only option during the semester, you can get always request budget for your organization. So, but you need to directly connect with pre president, vice president and treasurer. So, and maybe many of us didn't know this, but we have new student organization budget up to $500. So you can always up apply for this if you have any student organization. So, and then what we do in the finance committee basically during the year, since most of the money distributed at the beginning of the academic year, during the, um, during the semester, if student organizations want to change uh, where they wanna spend the money, so kind of you wait for this, such as you're organizing a guest speaker and then it's just canceled, 
So you just don't want to, you want to use the money for another event. So you need to let SGA know about the change and then we are voting this change to decide if you can still use the money for another event. So another thing I want to get, I think that's the most important point I want to make since I'm in the finance committee. I think Naglan Lexi is going to like that too. So as SGA senator, each member so uh, have a um, right to submit a budget ap application. So such as if, if I design an event or, or a program, so I can, as a senator, I can request budget and then there is no time limit in that. So uh, this is our first time, Tessie and I first time in the SGA. So we are still learning. But so far in a month, those are the things we learned and then we are still working on together uh, with GSA to uh, what we can do, what we can request. Uh, we are always uh, open to um, any options. And uh, as a senator, we can go legislative offer. So just keep in your mind and let us know if you have any ideas or concerns. Thank you so much. I will be happy to get any questions if you have. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Marve and Tessie. It was so great to have you both here and talk to us. Um, so yeah, this is a great time for us to just all start thinking about ways that GSA and SGA can collaborate a little bit more. So just start thinking that through and then we'll of course have them back and they'll be at our meetings in the future. So we can keep discussing this. And if you wanna bring your ideas next week to come talk with GSA, we would love to hear them then as well. Okay, so that wraps everything up for us. Um, so our next meeting is not going to be until February. So we're going to announce that date once we all know our schedules and we look at senator schedules and stuff too. So look forward to that. Um, but next week, remember that Thursday, November 19th at 4.30, we'll be meeting with Dean Burke. She is a great resource for all of us. Bring your questions, bring your comments, come hang out with us after she leaves at five. Um, so look forward to that link being sent out. So if you have any other questions, feel free to email us, but we'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, have a good evening.